Dogman came up out of our well. Dear Scary Stories NYC, When I sold my first company in 1992, my wife we can call Johanna and I were able to buy our first private home. It was large enough for us to have kids in it, but picturesque enough for us to want to spend our retirement in as well. It was located out in the country in northern Michigan, and we were both very happy. Then came the day when the Michigan Dogman came climbing up out of our water well. I should go back a little and explain that well first. When Johanna and I first visited the house before buying it, the well was actually a selling point for me. The water came from a spring down deep, is what we were told, and when I tasted it, that water was so clear and cold and sweet tasting that I couldn't believe I was drinking something that came unfiltered up from the bowels of the earth. There was something magical about owning my own well since I was born and raised a city boy. Then, one day, the well water tasted nasty and sour, and we just stopped drinking it. This was long before the sighting of the Dogman. Come to think of it, I can't remember how long before the Dogman sighting it was when the water turned sour. We figured it was to do with something that happened far beneath the surface of the earth, and I suppose that did turn out to be true. One day, my wife called me over, and out of one of the house's back windows, we watched as a real-life nightmare dragged itself up out of that well. At first, it was just the fingers. There were long, super long, dark gray fingers with long, long nails at their ends. And I wondered if these were actually gloves we were staring at. We were seeing fingers from two hands, much larger than my own clearly belonging to someone trying to get out from being inside that well. It took quite some time of just the fingers wiggling there before anything else happened. I suppose in retrospect that the creature was resting and hanging there before attempting its next maneuver, which was to pull itself up far enough to rest one forearm on the top of the well. My wife gasped as it was not only a forearm far longer than any which either of us had ever seen, but it was gray and hairy in a way that no human forearm had ever or likely would ever look. Was that a forearm of a chimpanzee, maybe? One thing for certain, the hands were not gloves. This was a creature with dark gray fur and darker gray skin underneath the fur. Johanna and I exchanged multiple long glances, but we could each tell from the other's facial expression that we had no idea what we were witnessing that night. I began to think it had to be a chimpanzee, but I've never seen a chimp with such a long, sharp, badger-like claws before. I also could compare the claws to those of a kangaroo on one hand, and a bear on the other. Imagine those long, sharp kinds of dangerous weapons at the ends of fingers on paws that looked far more like hands than dog paws. Soon, the beast was able to swing its other arm up on top of the well, and that was when we finally saw the creature's head rise slowly out of the well, grimacing as it raised its body weight using the strength of its two front limbs alone. Johanna made a sickly sound and ran to the bathroom. I sympathized with her as I saw what in my mind was the most sickening looking monster face that ever existed and I saw it rise up out of what had once been our sweet water well. I want to pause the narrative for a moment to say that I've been telling this story for a long time and in the 1990s and early 2000s, people used to just listen. Some of them would believe me that I was telling them the truth as I remembered it, while the others would try to figure out my angle 
and why I would be making up such a tall tale. More recently, though, when I tell the story, I get interrupted by people who tell me that I'm not allowed to say that the Dogman is ugly because they once saw a Dogman and it was magnificent. Or, if I say something that sounds too sympathetic to the monster, there are others who will take me to task for not hating the Dogman enough. One woman I met at a convention about a year before the pandemic got furiously angry at me for calling the Dogman ugly. She said it was climbing out of the water, so it looked wet. That didn't give me the right to call it slimy looking, I was instructed. It's like they identify with the monsters, or the other ones identify with the victims, and they want to tell me what I'm allowed to think and say about my own life experiences. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry that the dogman looked ugly to me. He looked so ugly to my wife that she ran to the bathroom and got sick. Let's face it, a wet dog is not the prettiest sight in general, but the mangled leathery face of a big old bull dogman that had probably survived more battles than Genghis Khan is not going to win any beauty contests. You're entitled to have a different opinion, but my body reacted in great fear and panic. I lost control of my bladder as the dogman pulled himself up out of the well in three graceful and quick movements. This was the largest man I'd ever seen. This was the most ripped torso of all time. I don't know how tall he was. I think if you used a tape measure on him and you looked to see how tall, the tape measure would just read something like, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. It was a dog. I could see that by the time it was fully out of the well. The rear legs were far more like ordinary wolf legs than the front ones. I'd say that below the torso, it was more a dog than a man. And yet the entire creature looked natural together. It dropped to all fours and was big enough to ride like a pony. Then it did that thing dogs do to shake off all the water, and I think he watered the lawn for the week with that one action. I watched as it then sat on its rear and scratched its ear for a while, and then suddenly the backyard lights came on, and the dog rose up to its full bipedal height, looking around in surprise. I think I was as surprised as the dog, and I leaped back from the window. I could see the great beast running into the woods behind our property. And as he did, I saw that he was about the same height as a young tree that he ran past. The next day, I measured the height of that tree, and it was 11 feet tall. Since I was viewing from a lower angle, maybe the dogman was only 9 or 10 feet tall while standing up, but basically, anything over 6 feet tall seems scary tall to me. So it turned out that Johanna had been the one who flipped the lights on, hoping to scare the beast away, which is what happened. The next morning, I shone some lights down into the well, trying to figure out what exactly had happened. I couldn't see too well, but obviously the dogman had come from underground, somehow invaded the spring that our water came up from, and swam through the spring to reach the surface. Was that his first time? Had he been doing this for some time? Did he return to his underground home? Or did he stay up on the surface for good? How many of these dogmen were using the well? We knew when it had started, when the water's taste turned sour. I wondered about what precisely had happened and if it could be repaired. I wanted to have animal experts out to the house and figure out if we could have our nice water back. I wanted to locate the source of the spring, locate what was letting the animal or animals in to foul up the water, and then see if we couldn't restore it to something closer to its original state. I had already started contacting experts and sorting out how to make something like this happen, but my wife put her foot down. If that wolf man wanted our well, she said, then he could have it. We were not going to battle for ownership against the wolf man. That was not something Johanna was interested in participating in. Now, 
This was a long time ago, obviously. These days, I think I'd have maybe approached Bob Bigelow about buying the place, but back then, haunted or cursed properties were hard to sell at any price. We moved out, but at a loss, one that still hurts me to this day. So, my wife and I retired in an apartment in a high-rise building in a major city. It's not what I had hoped for or envisioned, but at least Johanna's happy. My dream was to wake up in the country hearing birds outside my window as I entered my golden years. Instead, I wake up to jackhammers and ambulance sirens, and I can remember the exact moment when my dream died. It was the moment my wife and I saw... <laughs> Dogman came up out of our well. Godzilla Tim, Godzilla Tim. He's a cool guy, we all like him. Please join us in thanking today's executive producer, Godzilla Tim Walker, for making this episode possible. In exchange, Godzilla Tim gets all our cool and badass perks, like our secret uncensored dogman stories, far too wild to tell on this channel. Now, here's international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman to fill in the rest of the deets. Hank? Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it with your friends and family that you think might also be interested. If you would like to see more of our work, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will alert you when we put out a new video. To become a channel member and gain access to our special perks, you can click that join link under each of our videos. Another option is to join our PayPal Subscribers Club at PeterBernard.com. You can join for as little as 99 cents on YouTube or a buck fifty at PeterBernard.com, and that gains you access to our weekly secret uncensored episodes. If you'd like to see our 21 hours of archives of uncensored Dogman stories, then please join at the $3 level or above. To get to watch our shows in advance of the public, please join at our $10 level that gets you all the perks. If you join our channel memberships, you need to check our community page here on YouTube in order to get the links to the secret videos and other perks. If you're in the PayPal Subscribers Club, Peter will email you all the news and links himself. Once joining the PayPal Club, which is Peter's homemade club, please give him a chance to see that you've joined and to compose you a personal welcome email as none of that is automated. But whichever you join, We'll name you an executive producer for the next available episode. Do you have a scary experience that you'd like to share with us? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 le scary That's 804-537-2279. It's a Google voicemail box, so that means it keeps cutting off after every three minutes. If your story is longer than that, please keep calling back and we can piece it together on our end. Good night and have a scary tomorrow. Scary story.